So we have our principal quantum number n, okay, as that gets bigger, uh, bigger value means higher energy, means the electrons further away. Our next quantum uh, number is L, and that's our angular momentum quantum number. Okay, lowercase l, so remember I'm going to denote this uh, with a cursive L. And this denotes the shape of the orbital. <coughs> okay, so the shape that the electron is potentially found in. The possible values of, of the angular momentum are going to depend on n. And essentially, it's going to be any integer of n minus 1. Okay, so that's the number 1 there, not an L. Okay, so L can equal 0. Okay, if n equals 1, L can equal 0. Uh, if n equals 2, L can equal 1 and 0. If n is equal to 3, L can equal 2, 1, and 0, and so on and so forth. Okay, so n kind of dictates what uh, L can be, what its potential is. So L can potentially still exist up to infinity minus 1, right? Uh, but not likely just because n is also not likely to be infinity. So we're going to focus on what it means when L equals 0, 1, 2, and 3. These are kind of the primary L numbers. And the reason for that will be will become clear at the end of these lectures. Um, but we want to look at what each of these four numbers mean for us, and it tells us a different shape. So when L equals 0, this is called the S orbital, and it is spherical in shape. <clears throat> the size of the orbital depends on the n value. So if we have, say, a sphere here, and, and yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a great artist. You guys have seen it before. Uh, we have a sphere, not just a circle. And we would call this the 1s orbital. This one out in front, that represents the quantum number n. So that means that n is equal to 1. And the s here is representing that the l value equals 0. And, and <clears throat> what this shape means is that um, our electron, if it's in this orbital, can, is most likely going to be found somewhere in this sphere. If we move and look at the 2s orbital, Okay, it still stays the same shape because it still has um, L equal to 0. But its n value gets larger, which means that the electron must be found or have a potential to be found further away from the nucleus. So we're still spherical in shape. But now we have a bigger sphere to work with. And again, if we continue to get larger, here we have the 3s, n equals to 3. We're still looking at the s orbital, so l is still equal to 0. If oops, l is equal to 1, Okay, if you're looking for something to be confusing, you could see that distinguishing an L from a 1 is very difficult. <laughs> but when L is equal to 1, this is our p orbital, and this is a dumbbell shape. Or you could think of it as a figure 8. Oops. Um, but remember this three dimensions. Okay, so figure 8 can be a little misleading. Um, so what happens here is we have our nucleus in the center. And our shape, this dumbbell shape, has two lobes to it. And they're supposed to be equally sized. Again, my artistic value is coming through. <coughs> 
And we can call this, say, a 2p orbital. So we have n is equal to 2, and then l is equal to 1. We had to increase this value to 2. We couldn't have 1 uh, because at when n equals 1, l can only equal 0 because uh, l is equal to n minus 1. And so n minus 1 be, would be 0. That's the only possibility. When n equals 2, l has the possibility of being 1, and that represents our p orbital. What's important about our p orbital is that our electron can exist over on this left-hand side. Okay, we can find it here. We can also find it over here on the right-hand side. And remember, these orbitals here are representing our electron density, where we are most likely to find the electron. So the electron can be found in this left-hand side. The electron can be found in the right-hand side. Okay, but there is zero probability of finding the electron directly in between. So our electron can get from one side to the other, but doesn't ever exist in between. And we've talked about this before. If you're struggling of how a, a particle, how something can get from one side to another without ever existing in between, you're thinking of the electron as a particle and you need to get away from that. Okay, remember, the electron acting as a wave can get from one side to the other. What it means for it to not be able to exist here is that its energy goes to zero. Okay, remember the wave because it fluctuates, because it goes up and down, right? It can actually be equal to zero. When we have this specific time where there's a place where there's zero probability to find the electron, we call this a node. So our p orbital right there in the center has a node, and actually that uh, zero probability actually extends above and below in all uh, circular, so three dimensions, so all the way uh, in between here, and we would call this a nodal plane. <clears throat> so if we wanted to look at another type of p orbital or another version of the p orbital, if we looked at the 3p orbital, okay, same concept as up above, it just has to get bigger. So we have much bigger lobes to our dumbbell here. Nucleus is still in the center. And we still then have a nodal plane. Our n, our quantum level is 3. When we're looking at the p orbital, that means our l is equal to 1. When n equals 3, we have another possibility. So we can have a, a, an s orbital when n equals 3. We can have a p orbital when n equals 3. We can also have a d orbital. So here we have l is equal to 2. This is a d orbital. And, and essentially, this is uh, going to be a double dumbbell. Oops. Plus, it also has kind of a p orbital with a ring. So kind of our, our shape that we can have is we have a double, double dumbbell. And there are actually four different orientations of this. And we'll talk about orientations on the next page. Uh, but I do want to get into them a little bit here. Our double dumbbells 
Essentially, we have a dumbbell like that, and a dumbbell like that, kind of almost like a four-leaf clover. There are four orientations. And the P orbital with the ring, so it's going to have a P orbital, and then the ring goes around. Okay, and there's just one of this type. Uh, so I kind of think of this, if you know those inflatable rings that you used to use maybe as a kid uh, when you're in the pool, that's kind of what this, uh, this ring is. Um, it's just a little inflatable toy around the P orbital itself. So what do I mean by these uh, orientations here? Well, <clears throat> we're in three dimensions. Okay, So if we think of our axes here, and this would be, say, the x-axis and the z-axis. The y-axis would be coming out and going away from us. And our uh, One of our orientations here would have the lobes of our double dumbbells going in between the x and the z-axis. And we can also have a similar representation if we look at, say, the x and then our y axis. Okay, this would be coming away from us and or going towards us and away from us. Again, our lobes would lie in between the axes. And then our other combination here, we have our Z and our Y axis. Again, with our lobes going in between. Those are all supposed to be equally sized. <clears throat> our fourth orientation of this double dumbbell type happens uh, between the X and the Y axes. And rather than being in between the axes like, like it is here, it will actually be on the axes themselves. And then our last one here, the P orbital with the ring, that's going to be based on the X and the Z axis, and our P orbital portion of it, the single dumbbell, it's just like a P orbital, it'll be a little bit bigger, and then our ring goes around, and it's actually going to go around on the X axis, so it's actually coming out at us, so it's kind of flipped over. <clears throat> if you would like some uh, better <laughs> better drawings than my lovely artwork here, feel free to do an internet search. You can find lots of different um, sites that will have pictures of these better, you know, computer generated artwork. You can probably find ones that you can manipulate and spin around and look at. Um, I won't ask you to draw out the different what the axes look like, but I do need you to be able to represent that a D orbital is going to be a double dumbbell. There's four of them with this P orbital with a ring. Mm -hmm. Now, because up here uh, with our P orbitals, we did have a nodal plane. We do have nodal planes as well on our four uh, D orbitals down here. And for the ones that lie in between the axes, the nodal plane is actually on the axes. So these are nodal planes. Over here, your nodal planes would then be in between the axes. And on our <clears throat> P orbital with the ring, d that D orbital, uh, doesn't have a, a nodal plane, but it does have a node. 
doesn't have a nodal plane because if we extended the plane across, it would actually um, cross into where the electron can exist uh, in the ring portion. All right, so uh, these are representing all 3D. Let me switch pens here. These are 3D orbitals. So 3D. And again, these are just depicting the uh, orientations of them. And you do not need to know this, but just for your information, uh, these do have all specific names. This one here is called the 3DZ squared orbital. This one here that lies on the axes, this would be the 3D x squared minus y squared orbital. In between the x and the y, this is the 3D xy. Between the y and the z is 3D yz. And here between the x and the z, we have 3D xz. Again, these specific names you don't need to know, they're just for your information because you might see this uh, <clears throat> nomenclature, this way of representing them uh, either in your book or when you are um, looking at other resources. Our last uh, angular momentum quantum number that we're going to talk about is L equals 3. Uh, this is called an F orbital, and this is going to have seven different uh, orbitals, so seven different orientations. And, and essentially they're going to be double double dumbbells. Okay, So we went from a dumbbell, we doubled that for our d orbital. Okay, For our f orbital, essentially it's going to be two d orbitals put together. Okay, And it gets a little complicated with these Doubling up, not too bad, not going to draw them because you definitely need three dimensions to really represent them well. Uh, it gets a little more complicated if you include the 3dz uh, squared orbital over here. Um, so if you'd like to know what these orbitals look like, just feel free, uh, do a Google search or whatever internet source you like to do your searching, uh, and you can come up with lots of um, pictures uh, that you can look at. Um, I will not require you to draw out a, an F orbital. In the next video, we'll talk about our next uh, quantum number, and that talks about our direction or our magnetic quantum number, basically the direction of the orbital.